Okay, so we're in this curious predicament of wondering if, is there a way to rethink the number line so that the numbers 9, 99, 999, 9999, and so on end up approaching the number negative 1 somehow? Wow, mind mendy. So first of all, let's think about how we normally think about the number line. For example, here's the number line again. Here's 0, here's 5, here's negative 5, and so on, 10, all the rest. Now actually, where did, I, where, where did I place these numbers? I placed 5, for example, so there's actually 5 units get me from 0 up to 5. So I drew 5, basically a distance 5 units away from 0. This is a very additive way of thinking, because I'm actually thinking of 5 as 1 unit plus 1 unit plus 1 unit plus 1 unit plus 1 unit. So when we normally think of distance on the number line, we're having an additive mindset. 10 is 10 units away from 0, because I'm thinking of 10 as 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 10 ones adding up to get me to this position on the number line. OK, so what I'm going to do now is change my mindset about the notion of distance on the number line. Now, many problems in mathematics, of course, are about addition, but many other problems are actually also about multiplication. In fact, mathematicians have many unsolved problems about multiplication, namely factoring a number. What's an easy, obvious way to factor numbers? How can I tell if a number has no factors? How can I tell if a number's prime or not? These are really deep, hard questions in mathematics about arithmetic, about multiplication in arithmetic. So it could be good to develop a handy way to think of the number line, not additively, but multiplicatively. Now, what could that possibly mean? All right, so I'm going to keep my discussions for the moment in the 10-1 machine. I'll keep base 10 for our minds. So in my multiplicative way of thinking, I'm going to say 0 is the most divisible number of all. I can divide it by 10 once and still stay with an integer. It's 0. I can divide it by 10 twice. Divide by 10, divide by 10. I've still got an integer, namely 0. I can divide this by 10 a thousand times, and I've still got an integer. It is highly, highly divisible. It's the most divisible number of all. Now, 40 is kind of 0-like in this multiplicative way of thinking, because I could divide it by 10 at least one time and actually get an integer still, an integer to answer. Actually, 400 is even closer to being zero-like, because I can divide it by 10 twice and end up with an integer. In fact, 4,000 is even more zero-like, because I can divide it by 10 three times and still stay as an integer. So that's how I'm now going to think of distance. I'm going to say, in my mind, the number 4,000 is way closer to zero. It's more zero-like than 400 is. And 400 is more zero-like than 40 is. So some numbers are very zero-like, some are less zero-like. Aha! Because that's what I'm going to do now. That's going to be my notion of distance, how zero-like it is. How many times can I divide by 10 and stay in the world of integers? The more times I can do that, the closer it is to being like a zero. Now, look at these numbers. 9, 99, 999, 9,999, and so on. Think of them this way. This is 10, take away 1. This is 100, take away 1. This is 1,000, take away 1. This is 10,000, take away 1, and so on. In my multiplicative thinking, where distance is now done in a multiplicative way, that's kind of zero-like. That's more zero-like. That's much more zero-like. That's getting even more zero-like. In fact, if I kept going on the right-hand side, these numbers are getting more and more zero-like. They're getting closer and closer to zero in this multiplicative mindset. So the right-hand side wants to become zero minus one. And the left-hand side wants to become the crazy number, infinitely many nines going off to the left. So it looks like in this multiplicative way of thinking of distance on the number line, this, this number, infinitely nines to the left, wants to be zero minus one, negative one. Just like we proved back in the previous video. If you believe this has a meaningful answer, that is, if you're in a system of arithmetic where this actually has meaning to you, then the answer has to be negative 1. Voila. There it is. Great. So I'm now going to play this game. Numbers that are highly divisible by 10 are more zero-like. They're closer to zero. So my geometry of the number line is now strange. I can't actually visualize it anymore because my brain's not trained to think that way. But these numbers really are marching to negative 1 on the number line in this context. So let's start doing arithmetic. So let me clean the board. Let me draw this number in a 10-1 machine. Let's play with it a bit more and actually do some arithmetic with these infinite numbers going off to the left. How wild. All right. So here's the number 99999 going off forever towards the left 
in the 10 won machine. So it's negative one in a multiplicative mindset. In fact, we can see that I can actually add one dot to this and see what happens. Kaboom! Dot, kaboom! Dot, kaboom! Dot, and so on. I can see it's wiping the machine clear, becoming back down to zero. In fact, if I wrote it this way before, I believe this number plus one wants to be a whole bunch of zeros. That is, it wants to be zero. Um, and here's why this works in this multiplicative mindset. Because in this machine, dots going off to the left that exist over here are really small numbers. These numbers are getting smaller and smaller. They're closer to being zero-like. You can divide this one by 10 twice. I can divide this one by 10 three times. You can divide this one by 10 seven times, by 10 a thousand times. These numbers are getting smaller as we go off to the left. If I think about distances on the number line this way. Just like before in ordinary arithmetic, it was numbers going off that way into the decimals. They got smaller as we went along. So all this error that we get by adding one and seeing all this explosion going on here is getting to the small and smaller world in this mindset, in which case this really does want to become zero. That's the key to thinking about how to do this. So this number is negative one. Then I can say, all right, what would negative two be? Well, I could play this sort of game here again. What I did, a whole bunch of nines going off to the left, then end in an eight. If I add two to that, I can see I get zero, carry the one, zero, carry the one, zero. That must be negative two. What's the number negative 40 in this, in this way of thinking? Well, negative 40 would be, can you see it? A whole bunch of nines that end in six, zero. Because I can see if I add 40 to that, that will get me down to zero. Beautiful. Do you know what? In this mindset, we can also do fractions. Look at this number. A whole bunch of sixes going off to the left, six, 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 all to the left, ending in a seven. Let me multiply this by three. So let's do a very long multiplication problem in this mindset. This is meaningful to me. It's going to be in my multiplicative way of thinking about distances. Here we go. 7 times 3 is 21. 1, kaboom, kaboom, 2. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 more dots. That makes 20 dots. Oh, 0, kaboom, kaboom, carry 2. 3 times 6 is 18, 20 dots. 0, carry the 2. 0, carry the 2. 0, carry the 2, and so on. I'm doing this forever. In fact, all the errors are bunching up into the small realms going to zero, a whole bunch of sixes ending in seven times three wants to be one. That means this number is behaving like the fraction one third. It is something which when multiplied by three gives the answer one. It wants to be one third. Wow. Okay, so let's really start playing. I wonder what the number four sevenths looks like in this way of thinking. What is it? I need something that when multiplied by seven gives the answer four. What something fits the bill? Right, so I think I need to clean the board again, so let me do that, and let's work out what four sevens is in the strange world of infinite numbers going off to the left. And we can do it. Okay, so I'm in a world where I'm allowing numbers to have infinitely many digits going off to the left. Grand. And I'm looking for now something that deserves to be called four sevens. One of these strange numbers with the property that if I multiply it by seven, I should get the answer four. Four on the nose. So we've got here is my 10 one machine filled with dots, A dots, B dots, C dots, D dots, blah, 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 off to infinity that way. But I want, I want this to be a machine such that if I multiply all the number of dots in this machine by seven, I will get four dots on the nose. There's in four dots here, nothing, 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 zeros thereafter. Four on the nose would be four here and the rest zeros. All right, so let's do it. I'm just going to follow my nose and try to work out what other values of the dots counts in these, each of these boxes to make this work. So let's see how I'm going to do this. First of all, I've got some dots in the machine, and I say multiply them all by 7. So let me actually do that. So let's multiply each number count of dots by 7. So instead of, having, instead of having A dots here, we'll have 7 A dots. Instead of B dots, we'll have 7 B dots, 7 C dots, 7 D, 7 E, 7 F, 7 G, 7 H, 7 I, 7 J, 7 K, and so on. All right. So. Once all these explosions occur, whatever the explosions happen, I'm meant to be left with four dots here, no dots here, no dots here, no dots here, no dots here, and so on. All right, now, let's think our way through this. 7a. This multiple of 7 is meant to leave four dots. Well, it's not going to be four dots, because no multiple, 4 is not a multiple of 7, but 14 is a multiple of 7. If I have a equals 2, then I'll have 14 dots here, which 10 would explode, kaboom, and leave Four behind. So A must be 2. Bingo. So if A is 2, that makes 14 dots here, 
kaboom, four left behind, and an extra dot there. So, maybe you can see how I'm going to think my way through this. Because now I've got four dots there, which is what I want, that's good, but I want zero dots there. So some multiple of seven plus one more dot is meant to leave zero dots behind. Oh, I'm thinking 49. Seven sevens is 49, plus one makes 50 dots here, then I have a bunch of explosions, five explosions leaving none behind. So B must be seven. B is seven, 49 plus one is 50. Kaboom, kapow, gazing, gazoop, gazak, leaving zero behind, and an extra five dots there. Now 7C plus five isn't meant to leave behind zero dots. Uh, what multiple of seven am I thinking of? Oh, uh, 35. C must be five. 35 plus five is 40 dots. Kaboom, kapow, gazing, gazak, leaving zero behind, and an extra four dots there. 7D plus four, uh, gosh, uh, 56 plus four, will leave zero dots behind. So D must be uh, seven eighths of 56. Okay, D is eight. Seven eighths is 56 plus four is 60. Kaboom, kabow, gazing, kajup, kajup, kajup. So it leaves zero behind and an extra six dots over yonder. I'll just keep going. In fact, I'll just do this forever, apparently. Uh, seven E plus six. Um, some multiple of uh, seven plus six is, oh, E must be two. E must be two. So 14 plus six is 20. Kaboom, kabow. Zero behind, extra two there. I'm going to be here for a while, but I'm going to do it. Some multiple of seven plus two. What am I thinking of here? Oh my golly gee. Um, oh, what multiple of seven am I talking about here? 28. 28 plus two adds up to 30. So F must be four. All right, four. 28 plus two is 30. Kaboom, kaboom, zip. Plus, uh, what did I say? Uh, 30, so plus three. Seven G plus three is now meant to be a multiple of 10, leaving zero dots behind. Oh my gosh, what multiple am I thinking of here? Um, uh, oh, G is one. Because seven plus three is 10, kaboom! Zero behind, extra dot here. Seven H plus one. Oh, oh, seven H plus one. I feel like I've been there before. I feel like I've done 49 plus one before. That fact gives me what H equals seven. Oh, I think I'm going to be in a little period here that I bet if I do the same thing, back to this work, I bet the next one's going to be five, and I bet the next one's going to be eight, and then two, then four, then one, then seven, then five, then eight, then two. All right, I think I'm in a cycle, in which case this number here, which deserves to be called four sevens, is this thing. We first got a two, then we got a seven, then we got a five, then we got an eight, then we got a two, then we got a four, then a one, and then we repeated that. An infinite block of six digits going off to infinity to the left. I think we've just worked out a number that deserves to be called four sevenths in the strange infinite arithmetic off to the left. This is brilliant. Now, mathematicians actually call this system arithmetic a name. They call it the 10 addict system. 10 means 10, because I'm doing it in base 10 right now. And addict is a prefix that means the count of operations. So we're counting various operations here. This is 10 addict arithmetic. And we can do negative numbers, like negative two is a whole bunch of nines, ends in an eight. We can start even do fractions in this 10 addict system. And in this world, this actually does make sense. It's the multiplicative way of thinking about mathematics. Because on this end of the scale, all these powers of 10 are getting closer and closer to being zero. So actually going off that direction is fine. They do indeed converge to meaningful numbers. Wow, welcome to an unusual system of arithmetic.